Welcome to the NBC Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. A story about main stylists? What sheer delight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And guess what? The stylist is Zephyr. I retract my previous statement. But he's good at it. Well, that's a change. But the best side is he has anxiety attacks. Oh, no, I can't totally relate to that. But the good side is he has a girlfriend. Okay, are you going to tell me next that the Frokert has potassium benzoate? <laughs> yes, he does. How do you know? Can I go now? No, we have to do this. <laughs> ah, I love that joke. That joke was fun. Simpsons, right? Yeah, you got it. All right. Yeah. We're all on the same page. Yay. Uh, okay, anywho, in today's episode review, we are going to review the My Little Pony comic issue number 74. In this issue, Fluttershy's brother Zephyr Breeze attends the all equestrian main styling conference where he meets all other stylists that shares the same interest like he does except some of them are trolls those parts i just added in just because he's going to go con <laughs> uh boys but before we start first impressions are in order and silver what do you think well this was actually this was a fun and enjoyable one uh there's going to be an interesting comparison to make uh but we'll save that for when we get into the meat of the story. I like this. I like this presentation of Zephyr more. It, if memory serves, this came out before the 200th episode. Yes. And so it actually shows Zephyr uh, sticking to his career path and actually uh, accepting responsibility. Whereas the 200th episode, well, he's thrown into a completely different, different profession again. And you're like, wow, he learned nothing. But the, 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 but that's the thing. Like, this comic came out. I was like proud of Zephyr. Like, yeah, man, you stuck to it. You became good at what you did. Like, good for you, man. Good for you. And when the 200 episode came out, I was like, what the hell is this? You ruined him. What cruelty. I know, oh man, like, I, I get, I get the joke. Zephyr is not great at the things he do, but he did go to the main styling class, learn how to do stuff, and was good at it. And in the comic here, the, the, uh, I'm gonna save it, I'm gonna save it. Uh, but anywho, um, is that all Silver? That'll do it. All right. And as for me, I, I like this comic. This comic is one of those situations where if you're a content creator or if you're a creative person, you can relate to because it deals with anxiety by performance and so on. Well, performance anxiety <laughs> and uh, public speaking and all this stuff. And it's a comic that creative types like you and me can really relate to. And I really appreciate this comic. If you guys at home has not read this yet, pause here and go do so. Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed the comic. So let's start. So we start off the comic with our lead, Fluttershy, cleaning the blackboard, starting a new class session. And the student six say good morning to Fluttershy. And when Fluttershy turns to say good morning, she noticed the horribleness that is bad main day. Oh no. It seems that Silverstream has bad hair, Yona woke up on the wrong side a bit, and Vincent here didn't have his hair gel. And Fluttershy says, oh, no problem, I know a place, I know a place, um, you can guys, you have the school, you guys can follow me and we'll fix up your hair. And the name of the place is the main event, and it's the place where Zephyr works at. After some formalities and family bonding, uh, Zephyr starts work on the uh, student six, which is Silverstream, Yona, and Vincent. Uh, he comments on, oh, you need this, you need that. Uh, you need a lot of gel for your hair. No problem. I'm an expert. Sit down and let me work my magic on you guys. And after a few minutes later, he did his magic. And yeah, Frater Shai is impressed. And... Uh, Zephyr just says, oh, shucks, thanks, sis. Like, uh, <laughs> it's just some training and some natural skills. And he just breaks down that, oh, at first, uh, I was 
afraid to mess up. If I did the wrong thing, I could get fired and stuff like He had an anxiety attack while brushing Yona's mane. And Yona, oh uh, no, she, she got another fix later on. And Zephyr here just uh, talks to the group about he can't stop worrying about messing up. Like he feels like he's a phony. He felt like he didn't deserve the spot that he is in right now. Like he didn't do anything. Like he's just a phony. And uh, Vincent here just says, you know what? Why not go to a conference to learn some stuff? Usually people who go conference learn a lot of stuff from other people. So why not go there? And the group says, yeah, why not? That'll be fun. We could uh, join you. Uh, and Fluttershy said we could just write this off as a field trip. So why not? Two things in one. And so they do. And I'm going to pause here. Silver, what do you think? Well, first off, did you just call Sandbar Vincent? Yes. Wow. <laughs> You're really identifying the characters here. <laughs> it's a gimmick that I ran with. And I also forgot Sandbar's name. <laughs> Oh my goodness! <laughs> well, it's kind of funny to uh, to see the students with bad main days, but you realize, oh yeah, they uh, only half of them have mains. Although, when a, yeah, is that considered a main or is that just fur? I don't know. Like, what do yaks have? Volume control issues. <laughs> that, that that is true. That is true. No, I I don't know, man. Like. Uh... I, I, I honestly got no idea what to say because when you see a real yak, does it look like that? Like, I know it's... I haven't, I haven't seen that many real yaks. Yeah, so no idea. <laughs> uh, no idea, but carry on. Well, let's see. So it makes sense that only half the students, because you don't have a bad feathers day, you have molting. You don't have a bad scales day. You just, well, for humans, you get scales. It's really bad. I, I, but for dragons, I think they molt. Oh, there you go. Oh, God. Smolder and shedding season. Oh, God, no. And then there's Ocellus, and I don't even want to think about what kind of bad day she has. Probably she just sheds her carapace. There's a lot of shedding going on. With it. I'm, I'm suddenly getting a new disgusting view of the <laughs> student six. <laughs> uh, no comment. But uh, basically... It, it's fun to see this aspect, but at the same time, I'm yona it out. Ah, uh, yes. Yona is a part of every single story while the others barely feature. I mean, think about it. How many times has Yona gotten more press time, more screen time than her classmates? I get what you mean, but to be honest, in this one, Yona doesn't really shine through that much. Like, the only part... Or from this point on, is um, Zephyr brushing her mane in a ridiculous fashion and ruining her hair. So, I mean, that's just about it. Other than that, she's just there. It's true, but at the same time, she's never not there. This is coming from someone who's watched, consumed a lot of the media for My Little Pony, and yeah, I'm, like I say, I'm just yoning it out. I should feel glad for Silverstream, who, let's recall that in season nine, an episode that heavily revolved around her, mostly featured her disappearance. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true, true that, true that. Whoop, got it. Oh, man. Oh, man. Yeah, I gotta be cruel. But anyway. It's tough love, Norman. <laughs> but, but on to the actual main character. Ah, see what I did there. Aha! Zephyr, I like seeing this new Zephyr. He loves what he's doing. He's found a commitment, which is which was what made him very unlikable in his introductory episode, by intent. But they, there are little things they get wrong. Case in point, he calls Fluttershy his baby sister. Oh, yeah, she's the older... Oh, wow, I, I forgot about that. Huh. Well, it's it's a one-time thing. But, although I do like the dynamic on display as now that she's not being aggravated by him every five seconds, she's able, she's able to uh, grin and joke around and even sticks her tongue out at him, which will be a thing this this issue. I'm not sure why. <laughs> I'm surprised they ha didn't have a pony named Matt Raspberry while they were at it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but the, the interaction is cute. Like, like I mentioned before, 
uh, we didn't get this in the show proper. So it's nice to see this. And in all honesty, do we see any sibling interactions to this level? In, in, I'm sorry, in this issue or in the show? In the show. I would say the biggest would be between... Actually, Rarity and Sweetie Belle might be the biggest sibling interaction in terms of an exchange between equals of a sort. Twilight and Shining, the 200th episode was their uh, probably best sibling moment as we get to learn about their, their rivalry. But by and large, he's the perfect big brother. And maybe that's why I like Rarity and Sweetie Belle so much. They are the imperfect siblings, the ones that come to, to butt heads, and yet they still love each other very much. That is true. And also, uh, if we're not talking about main six, uh, Big Mac and Apple Bloom, I have to mention that one out before the commenters comment on it, because it's true. It's true, but it's also not quite voluminous. It's That was one stellar episode but I'm not sure if it really carried forward all through uh, the se- the series. Again, Rarity and Sweetie Belle, I can name a Sisterhood Social, For Whom the Sweetie Belle Tolls, Campfire Tales, Cart Before the Ponies. Uh, let's see, were there any others? Oh, uh, a little bit of the S- Stairmaster. Yeah, I-, I don't know, man. Like, I just like to see this kind of interaction. Maybe Big Mac and Applejack, probably. Oh, very true. I uh, I don't want to hold up too much on the complete sibling review, but it's just nice to see two siblings getting along, teasing each other, but still very much loving. True. It's a nice compliment to where <laughs> poor Fluttershy and Zephyr were in his introductory episode, where basically she had to be the mature parent because <laughs> her actual parents were struggling. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm still getting over the idea that Fluttershy's the bold one in the family. Well, if you think about it, she is the one that moved to Ponyville instead of staying in Cloudsdale, so that's very bold of her. Or, you know, she just couldn't fly back up to Cloudsdale, so she got a place <laughs> at five. <laughs> probably, probably. But anywho, let's continue on. So, we enter the con, and there is a lot of paraphernalias from uh, curdlers to goop in your hair and a demonstration on stage. So we see this pony styling a colt's hair in a pompadour and uh, she just says like, okay, this is how you do it, blah, blah, blah. And the judges, judges really, I, this, this is not a contest, by the way. So why are they judges? Well, there's critiquing. Also, it's reality TV, just, you know, in person. It, I mean, uh, no, I was about to point to BronyCon, but no, that there were that was a competition, talent show competition, even though it was just fun. Yeah, see, it doesn't make sense. But anyway, um, the judges come around, they critique the uh, stylist and how she executed the cuts and whatnot, and just really give strong-worded comments like, really, really strong. And Zephyr sees this and says, Oh, wow, um, that's uh, scary. I'm not going to go up on stage. That's very bad. Oof. And he walks away and bumps into another pony. And, oh no, uh, he helps the pony pick up the pamphlet or paper that she was holding. And said pony's name is named Pixel Cut. So she's been at the con for a few years now. She is, quote unquote, a veteran. And they talk for a bit. Um, Pixel Cut here giving advice to uh, Zephyr about being at the convention and whatnot. Um, so one of the few things that uh, Zephyr talks to Pixel here is that, oh, um, she, he's terrified about um, messing up and stuff like he, doesn't feel like he belongs there and Pixel can relate because she was like that too and what did she say to boost his confidence yes, uh, uh, and another creature will judge you sometimes it's true but as harshly as what was the whole line but uh, long story short she says that you shouldn't really overthink about this because yeah people will judge you but you have to to take it in stride and move on. I'm paraphrasing, by the way. So, anywho, with that, 
speech. Zephyr here feels really good about it and it makes him forget all about his worries. Pixel needs to head off to do some stuff and Zephyr joins back with the group. Yay, that's awesome. Fluttershy notices the chat that they were having and just asks, did you and Pixel had a good chat? And he did. And you know what? I, I like this part of Fluttershy because Fluttershy noticed stuff and yeah, he's giving him the okay. So probably Zephyr will have a girlfriend. Yeah. Fluttershy is a shipper. Huzzah! Yeah, yeah. Uh, but anywho, with that, Silverstream pops in and says, Yo, Zephyr, I have a great, I had a great idea. I had a great idea, right? You know, that stage, that, that stage thingy there with the demonstration and whatnot. Since you're a great stylist, you did my main. I sign you up. I sign you up so you can show everybody what you can do. Yeah. <laughs> and Zephyr just says, that is the most terrible thing that you could have done. Ah! He's freaking out and he runs away. <laughs> and I'm going to pause here. Silver, what do you think, man? Like, what? Well, I did say I wanted Silverstream to do more. <laughs> yeah, he, she, she did. Uh, Fluttershy's probably looking at her like, okay, you, you just pulled my, my friends. This usually happens to me, being volunteered for what uh, other people want me to do. Other ponies. So, yeah, Silver Stream is not such a good idea to sign someone out without their permission. Detention for you. Oh, well. I need to make a small correction, Norman. Mm -hmm. uh, our newest shipping material, uh, her name is Pixie Cut. Oh, Pixie, not Pixel. Okay, my bad. I just, I didn't want to invoke a bad Adam Sandler movie. <laughs> correction. I don't want to invoke an Adam Sandler movie. <laughs> correction. I didn't want to invoke it. <laughs> But I actually, I really like uh, Pixie and, and how she just addresses him. She and Zephyr, they just seem to hit it off right away. Which is, honestly, we're going to be talking once again about uh, Little Witch Academia, where <laughs> two characters seemingly hit it off because they argue all the time. I... And I, I'm a fan. I've seen that trope played out quite a bit. The two characters that just seem utterly at each other's throats until they're not. It's but this is not when Harry met Sally. <laughs> yeah. So I really appreciate that it's just that they meet, they talk, and they get to be friends very quickly. Yeah, because they have a, some they have something in common, which is um, hair styling, and at the same time too, uh, they have something uh, they can relate, which is anxiety attacks. And I believe, I think the line you were searching for is in this really well-drawn panel where Pixie says, I think it's really easy to get wrapped up in your own head. Yeah, and then when you worry so much about yourself, you start to think everybody else is worried about you too. And other creature will judge you sometimes, it's true, but never as harshly as you judge yourself. And that whole section there says a lot. In, in 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 a few words, it explains a lot how about people feel when they're having anxiety attacks because they judge themselves too harshly because is my work good? Is my work bad? Like, oh no, um, if it's bad, I don't want to post it. Oh, oh no, oh no, um, will people like it? Will people dislike it? Oh no. Or as I like to put it, every time I upload a video or comic. But at the same time, too, your stuff is great. And yet I'm still terrified. <laughs> You'll never not be terrified, I think. Then again, that's part of what what drives you to improve, to, to be better, try and be more. So maybe a little fear is warranted. True, and that's the that's the that's the risk. Like we put ourselves out there for people to look and see and critique and judge. Like once it's out there, it's out there, man. Like people will say and people will comment and critique like no <laughs> you you if you don't want people to say bad things don't show it or don't do it but if you don't do it you don't do you, you don't get anything uh, there there's a lot there's a lot this episode or this comic here says a lot like it's relatable it's very relatable 
And funny enough, we actually see a bit of the various styles of critiquing on display with the three judges. Case in point, the purple pony with the frilly mane, fuzzy mane? I'm not really sure what term I should use for that. It looks like really poofy cotton candy, but not in a Pinkie Pie way. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Basically, she's saying, she's pointing out all the positives of her work. And the green griffin with the very strange, uh, what are those? Mutton Cyber? chops. Mutton chops? Mutton chops, I think. Oh, the last time I saw mutton chops was on a very stereotypical British politi- uh, political analyst. <laughs> <laughs> last time I saw it was on Wolverine. <laughs> really all of you should use less pomade of the back of this sort of cut. <laughs> 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 and the funny thing is that in a way the judge is acknowledging the positives and obser- making an observation it a little bit of a rejection but mostly still geared towards uh, critique second judge a, a violet pony uh, saying the trim on the front is rather uneven that's really all they say no uh, no positive mention. So it's easy to amplify the negative. That's all you hear. But then we reach the dragon. And the dragon is, where did you learn to comb? Now that is pointing out that there's a problem, that there's an issue with the combing. But it's phrased in such a way that it is destructive criticism. It is re- it is insulting the attempt at, a, well, at an art. There are the comb. <laughs> True, and she's a dragon, but at the same time, too, I don't remember dragons having hair. And you never know, they might get extensions. Probably. Oh, what if it's a wig? Uh, yeah, probably, too. A, a dragon so obsessed with, with combing that they are willing to put on a wig. <laughs> but there were about a dozen ways you could phrase that differently to be an effective communicator. And she didn't, and... While there may be a valid point that the combing needs work, you've blocked your own efforts by not investing in crafting a message. I get so tired of people saying, I'm just saying my opinion or it's the truth. The truth will only serve you if it's heard. And if you are are careless with stating, quote, the truth, close quote, Mm -hmm. then you're not really uh, servicing it. In fact, you may actually be hindering it. Yeah, you're, even though if you have a valid point, you're not making your point come across eloquently. Or effectively. True. I quote Stephen Fry so often on this. It is a human failing to prefer to be right than to be effective. <laughs> uh, but anywho, let's carry on. So, Zephyr just walks around the crowd having a panic attack and somehow he ends up on stage again. Uh, he he just says this is the last place I want to be, but he hears the uh, next guest going on stage is Pixie. So he stick around and see what's up. Like uh, like he likes Pixie, so you know I'm gonna support her by just sitting in the crowd and watching her uh, doing her presentation. And what she wants to do is how to style a yak. Uh, what was it again? The yak hair color is deli- difficult. Blah blah. blah. Uh, well, and, and anyway, um, she wants to style a yak, and she has a lot of things that she's saying and a lot of stuff. So styling the yak is hard. So she does her magic, she do her thing, and in the end, the yak has a very nice main style. And the judges here just says, uh, marvelous, simply marvelous. As always, Miss Cut your a wizard of uh, main styling, and so on. And Zephyr goes to the back, uh, wanting to congratulate her, and he sees Pixel, sorry, uh, Pixie having a panic attack, and he just asks, um, are you okay? Um, and Pixie just says, yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. And she just breaks down, saying that, no, not really, uh, I get panic attack sometimes when I uh, go in front of a big crowd or present something. And Zephyr just says, really now? Because you look so calm and so composed. 
And Pixie just replies, it's all an act. It's all an act. And they mm-hmm. exchange few words. And the point is that Pixie just goes up there to push herself, to uh, push the boundary of her limits, to see if she can pass through this fear that she has. She says that trying to do something is scary because you might fail. But if you never try, then you'll never succeed either. And this somehow inspires Zephyr to go up on stage to um, not be paralyzed by his fear and just goes there. But he comes back to make sure if uh, Pixie is okay. And okay, he goes up on stage and... He addresses the judge and whatnot and starts um, doing his job. He's shaking, by the way. He's shaking. But in the end, he did the job and the judges are impressed. They're impressed by his work. But they critique because um, there's a few things... Uh, not perfect because about like the violet pony just says your edge are a bit uneven the dragon says and you could use a cora corusa was how you say that coral crosser blade on your uh, chiplets but i suppose you made it work it's a, a coarser blade on your clippers ah coarser blade on your clippers all right thank you i don't know why they bolded clippers it was of course, I've laid out your clippers. <laughs> oh, it's a horror movie. Oh, no. The Clippers. And and, and the sequel, <laughs> Clippers 2, the re Oh, God. But anywho, uh, the Griffin just says, fine work uh, for a talented main stylist who is just starting out. I think you got a bright future ahead of you. And <laughs> Zephyr is surprised and says, thank you. And... He goes down on stage and he's happy and Pixie comes along and congratulates him. And I'm, you know what? I'm just going to go to the end, go to the end. Uh, Pixie goes to congratulate him and he, Zephyr thanks Pixie for having the pep talk to him because if she didn't talk to him, he couldn't have done it at all. And well, she just says, just remember, if you ever get too trapped in your own head, look for a friend to pull you out. <laughs> and Silverstream just comes to Zephyr apologizing for signing him up because she didn't know that it freaked him out. And Zephyr just says, oh, don't worry, in the end it all worked out. And they all go to the snack bar going to have a snack and comic ends. So Silver... Uh, what do you think and final thoughts? Well, it, I appreciate uh, getting to see Pixie backstage. That is me before I do any public presentation. Afterwards, I'm actually on a bit of an adrenaline high. So I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I did it. <laughs> but but yeah, surely there's a there are moments where you have sort of that adrenaline crash too. <sighs> yeah. So I also appreciate that that Zephyr is eager to d- defend her, not what I would call white knighting, but just wanting to show support. And even Zephyr will will tackle anyone he thinks is is intruding against his friends. So that that's nice to see. Also, apparently, I have to amend my mutton chop statement on the Griffin, as in these shots, the the what looked like mutton chops in other panels are connecting to her mane. Her? I thought it was he. <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm not sure. This griffin's mane. Do the griffins have pet? What is going on? I don't know. Are they all? Is this really a covert wig convention? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Don't know you mentioned it. It's a griffin with hair. That's not normal. So I, I, I'm just thinking like. Sure, they're advertising main con, but like stenciled in really tiny letters and wig con too <laughs> underneath. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> also, seeing their reaction to Zephyr uh, raises a question. Even though they they critique, they're 
also a bit more gentle. And they talk, they explicitly mention that Zephyr is just starting out, which makes me wonder if that previous pony, the one where they were, I'd argue, harsher critics, they knew that pony to be a more established uh, stylist. So perhaps they were being harsher because they, you've been around the block, now now the kitty gloves are off. But with Zephyr, okay, you're just starting out, we're going to cut you some slack. Don't crush the dreams of a newbie. Yeah, and I appreciate that. I appreciate that a lot because, like you mentioned before, if you've been around the block for a while now, the kitty gloves are off when it comes to critiquing because you've done this as a profession for a while now. You're, so, you're, you're supposed to know what you're doing. So newbie mistakes are unforgivable. And for Zephyr, he's just starting out. He just got his... Well, he's in the game for probably three months, six months, or probably a year. So he hasn't been around the block yet. Judging by the things that he's doing, it's probably um, basic stuff, probably. Probably. But I appreciate that they are aware, and this is actually being a bit more effective in your critiques. So eh, there's good and bad in all these things. But overall, overall, I enjoy this comic. I think it does Zephyr a, a great service. And makes him a more likable character. He was meant to be unlikable in his introductory episode just to see him hit rock bottom and maybe get a little satisfaction out of it. Uh, not so in the 200th episode because that there it seemed to actually be uh, undoing some of his progress. Even though it was funny to see. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> yeah. The art for this it is both a strength and a weakness. The artist, let's see, let's see, it was uh, Kate Sharon. She does a lot of effort to play with the angles, to have ponies looking up and up at an angle and down. Twist around, it's not the, the safe three-quarter turn or head-on approach that I often, that I often see, uh, <laughs> heck, even in my own work. So being very bold, but at the same time, sometimes it feels like the shapes are too loose. Like the the ponies' faces are are jumbling on their own heads, or that the perspective becomes a little awkward as you see one eye being bigger or or more elevated than the other to the point where it, it almost feels surrealist. I do like the graphical representation of getting wrapped up in your own head, this black cloud with tendrils uh, twisting about. As a strange analogy, it reminds me of uh, the Andy Tarkovsky Clone Wars, where Anakin has seen a vision of how the dark side can take over and ruin you. To me, I see it as Venom. <laughs> Ooh, is this like a Rorschach test for nerds? <laughs> Probably. What? Tell me what you see this. I see tentacle porn. Okay, you've got issues. <laughs> ah, carrying on. Oh, I, I'm gonna, if you let me. No. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a fun comic. It's got shippy fuel galore. Oh. Yeah. And funny enough, at the same time, it came with a preview for the IDW 2020 My Little Pony issue. So you got to see just a little heads up. Yeah, and that one was a lot of fun. But uh, anywho, are you done, Silver? Yep, all done. All right, and as for me... I like this comic a lot. Like, I, I think throughout the review, you heard me express how I felt about the comics and how I appreciate the representation of anxiety. Because, in all honesty, um, we don't have much media covering the subject. Uh, I heard Steven Universe does it, but I'm not 100% sure if it does it well or not. So, I can't really say that Yes, it is, and yes, this is how they do it and whatnot. But uh, for ponies, from what I read here, this is a quick and simple representation of how a creative person feels and the breakdown of not letting it eat you up and uh, holding you back is a very powerful one. And Pixie here is a really nice addition to the show. And I do like her personality. I do like her positiveness. And I do like her gun ho 
nature where she, even though she's scared to go in front of a crowd uh, to present her work, she just do it because she knows that by doing it, it might help her move on and fight the fear that she has. And at the same time too, I like that she's supporting uh, or giving s- some advice and support to Zephyr here because it's a change because usually when we see Zephyr, he's always trying to get come on to another pony uh, like Rainbow Dash or some other chick or whatnot. Like that trope there tires me. And here we get to see him act like a normal person or a pony where they just talk normally and he's inspired. Probably this is him having a lot of respect for her because she's quote-unquote a senior in the art of mean cutting. Zephyr here has improved and the 200 episode just... Yeah, you feel bad for him. Yep. But anywho, yeah, the preview for the 2020, that is a lot of fun. Uh, I, I like this a lot. Uh, but anywho, that will be another day's talk and whatnot. Yes. <sighs> but anywho, Silver, what are we going to do for next week's episode review? Well, I mentioned Little Witch Academia, so how about we take a look at that? Ah, yes, that'll be fun. So, next week, we will be reviewing uh, Little Witch Academia, episode 10, uh, named Be Commit, uh, com- commit Commission? Com- commotion? Commotion, yes. Be Commotion. Or as I like to call it, the Shipping Hive. Yes. So, uh, join us for that review next week, because it is a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. So, anywho, uh, let's see. If you guys at home... Have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at dbsugmail.com. If you would like to reach us on the Twitters, the show's Twitter account is at DBS Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? Well, you can find me on both Twitter and DeviantArt under MLP Silver Quill. You can find me on Patreon and Kofi under Silver Quill and help support my videos and my channel and my comics. And uh, if you are on YouTube, do a search for Silver Crow. After the fact, I shall appear. And as we re- we return to the comics uh, in a few weeks, I will be on Equestria Daily posting reviews and editorials. Awesome, awesome. Guys, go check him out because his work is magnifique. <laughs> <laughs> I still got to do the tough love. <sighs> I have to stop <clears throat> doubling my words. Doubling my words. Uh, so, anywho... Um, let's see and also please subscribe to us on iTunes YouTube don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date and stitch your radio and also like our Facebook page you can catch us on PernilVilive.com links are in the show notes if you'd like to support the show you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show with every support you get a week's early access to review discussion podcast exclusive and deleted content and a huge thank you from me Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank Lucky Knight, Tristan, and also Master Black. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecil Vaquil. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS Show. See ya. Adios. So Silver, it's been almost three months since uh, we're stuck at home. So how does your hair look like? Because my hair looks like a jungle. What hair? Ha <laughs> ha!